Well, this structure and scope section is a, has a long PowerPoint, so I won't say an awful lot on this video. Uh, but that gives you a lot of information about the cooperative uh, industry, the types of cooperatives, and of course you need some of that for the homework and uh, for your take-home exams. Uh, I think the other, of course, important part about this is just start you to understand some of the terms that were used. And so when we talk about types of co-ops and we contrast a uh, ag co-op with a consumer co-op, you start to see some of those subdivisions and, and what we're using. Uh, there's a couple of structural pieces here that, that are going to be a, a little bit important. Of course, the regional structure. There's the federated and the centralized. And uh, people always miss that on test. And I just, uh, not uh, extremely important, but of course if you work with one of those co-ops, they they're, have a very different set of issues. And so, you know, uh, just like the Confederacy was a very loose uh, <clears throat> joining of states, the Federated Co-ops means the local co-ops own the regional. They don't have to do business with them. And so the farmers are a member of their local co-ops. Uh, and so it's not as efficient structure, but it's much easier to to, for the local co-op to, to communicate and for the members to be involved with the cooperative. Centralized co-op would be really just, just like a Atwoods, a tractor farm supply, got branches in many, many locations, all run out of a central office. And really when a local co-op goes through mergers and gets a lot of branch locations, it's operating like kind of a mini centralized co-op. And of course, as the co-ops get bigger like that, then the members are less involved. It's more difficult for them to identify with the co-op, but they can be very efficient the way they do products. So again, a lot of students just seem to reverse those on tests, and so uh, maybe we don't do a good job of uh, communicating that. The chapter also introduces you to the new gener the types of co-ops, the traditional open membership co-op, the new generation co-op, and then these new hybrid investor and uh, uh, member models. And we'll talk about those a lot more, but of course that'll be important for your project as you start thinking about the type of co-op situation you want. You also want to think about what structure is going to be most appropriate and then we can help you show you how you could reflect that on the feasibility template that you use to make the projections from your report. So uh, good information in this chapter. It's got some summary at the end where you get some information about the whole size of the co-op sector and of course how much are the different types of co-ops both in terms of sales and uh, revenue. So kind of a background chapter and I think a lot of this information will be uh, useful for you as you go through the course. So um, happy studying.